Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. Holy One, graciously behold this, your family, for whom your Son, Jesus Christ, was willing to be betrayed and to suffer. Have compassion on us and on all who turn to you for help. Amen. We will say song responsibly. Save me, O oh God. Waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. <laughs> Come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown <laughs> weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not in you be put to shame through me lord god of hosts let not those because of no surely for your sake have i suffered reproach and shame has covered my face stranger to my an alien to my mother's children Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen on me. I saw in this turn. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. A drunkard about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, God, and healing. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let waters deep pit. Do not answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me. I am. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. I redeem. Adversaries are all in your. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For, com for comforters, but I could find no one.
Gospel of the Lord according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. 
Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate told, said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? Oh, my soul. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he is claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside 
and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. One morning this winter, I saw an acquaintance with her kids and dogs walking on the trails outside of Grace Church. And as they walked around the building, I went out to say hello. And we got to talking about what was happening at Grace that week. And I invited them to join in. And she turned to me and she said very directly, I would go to church here for sure if we could leave off that Jesus dying stuff. I don't understand it. And none of us understands this part of the story that we enter now. Suffering never makes sense. There's never a good explanation. And as we listen, the pain of it, the injustice of it is incomprehensible. Without understanding why we are here, this is where we find ourselves on the map of faith today. We're stalled out in Jesus's suffering with no indication of how or when forward movement will continue. And as we read, we see that we're not the only ones who don't understand. Jesus is arrested and we see soldiers and police officers who can't understand the nature of his power. When they arrest him, they bring lanterns and weapons and torches to subdue him. But Jesus had never come in violence and he had never threatened military coercion. He had never threatened to hurt another person and he turns himself in. As they arrest him, they cannot comprehend his power. And then we see Pilate standing with Jesus later before throngs of people who had listened to Jesus's teaching and watched his healing. Pilate does not understand the nature of this kingdom that Jesus lives in and ministers out of. And Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus is not the king that the gathering of people expects or seeks or recognizes or understands. And so Jesus is mocked and a crown of thorns is placed on his head and a sign above him reads, King. 
Jesus' friends also do not comprehend what is happening. They don't recognize and they can't receive the faithfulness of Jesus' friendship. And so they betray him or they deny him and move away from his suffering. Peter denies Jesus once before Jesus is placed before the high priest and two more times after that. Peter can't understand Jesus' love and he turns away from it. Jesus is misunderstood. And in my own small life, I know that when I am misunderstood, I scramble to explain myself, or I look for a way to escape, to remove myself from the confusion or the accusation that I feel upon me. And here, Jesus does neither. Jesus is love embodied, and he stays put. It's hard to see Jesus refusing to explain, refusing to escape, and like others of Jesus' friends, I want to turn away from this part of the story. But our tradition has parked us here today and tomorrow, and we're stopped watching God's love misunderstood and rejected. This experience of being stopped here on Good Friday does not give us a formula or an instrument or a code to explain how to get from here to there. Rather, this experience of being stuck right here, being stranded, communicates God's embodied love in Jesus and the ways that the risks of God's embodied love, uh, the way that God risks love and the consequences of that risk realized painfully in Jesus' life. Today, in the midst of suffering all around us, in the midst of sickness all around us, we see scenes all over the world where people are stuck in pain, where people are stranded in confusion or anxiety or misunderstanding. We see people stuck without a home or enough to eat or stranded in a refugee camp with no, no guarantee of when they will leave. We see pictures of people motionless in a hospital bed or curled up in their homes with anxiety or doubled over with grief. We're physically separated from one another, and so it's hard to reach out. We know now more than ever the limits of our capacity to relieve others' suffering. Our neighbors are crying out in pain. And without trying to make sense of suffering that is senseless, this pain is the place where God meets us and stays with us. You have heard the story before of Sister Helen Prejean, who wrote Dead Man Walking. And she became a friend and a spiritual advisor to Pat Saunier, a man who was stuck on death row with no sense that he would ever leave. And at the very beginning of her relationship with Mr. Saunier, Sister Prejean wrote to him and she included three images in her letter. She included a picture of herself so that he could see what she looked like. She offered him a picture of the bay outside where she lived so that he could see the sun glittering on the water and remember what it looked like and what it felt like to be outside. And then she sent him an, an image of Christ on the cross. Showing the suffering of Jesus is typically not the calling card for Jesus I start with. It's not the place as a pastor I usually think to begin. But Sister Prejean opened her relationship with Mr. Saunier by acknowledging that God knows sorrow and that God meets us in our sorrow and in our stuck places. She wrote to him later, there are places of sorrow that only God can touch. And her relationship with him was all about acknowledging God's presence there. All through history, people in contexts ranging from jail cells to palaces, from refugee camps and hospitals to banquet halls, can find themselves stalled out on the map of faith, have found themselves stalled out in the map of faith, stuck in sorrow or pain that seems it may never be relieved. And in these stalled out places on our map of faith, when the timing of forward movement is unclear, 
people from all sorts of backgrounds look and find in the seat next to them a presence which does not flee from or argue away pain, a presence whose companionship points to life, and who even when we can't understand, even here, even now, even today, says to us, I have called you friends. Thanks be to God. Amen. What wondrous love is this, O oh, my soul, O oh, my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh, my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss? to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul, to lay aside his crown for my soul, to God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing, to God and to Sing to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am, while millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will sing. Dear people of God, Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might have life through him. We pray now for people everywhere according to their needs. God, you are the comfort for all who sorrow and the strength for all who suffer. We turn to you, seeking your mercy and compassion. We pray for people of God throughout the world and for all in this community. Unite us where we are separated. Reconcile us where we are estranged. 
befriend us where we are lonely and renew us where we are exhausted. Increase your love within us, O God. We pray for all people of the earth, for those in authority in every place. Give wisdom to those to whom we look for guidance. Move our leaders to serve the needs and protect the well being of all people. Increase your understanding within us, O oh God. We pray for all who weep today and for people who are anxious or afraid. Give shelter to each person who is without a safe place. Give endurance to those who are imprisoned. Nourish those who are hungry. Comfort all who despair and strengthen us when we are tempted. Increase your compassion within us, O oh God. We pray for those who are sick and for all who care for them. Strengthen those who risk their own well-being to care or provide for others. Give courage and hope to each person whose work has been taken. Give peace to those who grieve and to any who struggle to know what is true or how to pray. Increase your hope within us, O oh God. God of mercy, guide us and the whole world to see and know that things which were being cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that even now all things are being brought to wholeness and peace in your Son, whose life and in whose life and love all things hold together now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>